Well, hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Um, I think that video really sums up the, the last year for many um, IT operations professionals. It's been a, a case of firefighting, trying to come up for air, uh, and really trying to spend some time focusing on what really matters. So um, I'm really pleased to have you join us for this session today. Um, and in terms of what we're going to cover today, um, for those of you that have got, a, I guess, a more of a ServiceNow background, we're going to show you how you can actually leverage that investment you've made in ServiceNow, all the workflows, all the automation, now specifically for SAP. Um, for those of you who are joining us from more the SAP operations um, perspective, um, we'll highlight the step change improvement that's now possible for SAP operations. And that's really, really exciting. Um, but most importantly, um, you know, really bringing the two together, um, we'll show you how you can actually accelerate innovation and become agile for SAP. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking that they're not words you typically hit, see in the same sentence, uh, Agile and SAP, but I promise you there's things today that will really change, change your view on that. So um, without further ado, in terms of uh, our agenda, um, some quick introductions. So I'm Simon Wilson. I'm the um, COO and Head of Strategic Alliances for Avantra. I'm joined by um, Brenton O'Callaghan, who's our Chief Customer Officer. Hi, guys. And Hi, Brinson. And from ServiceNow, we've got Naveen Sharma, who's Head of Product for CMDB and ServiceGraph. So thanks for joining us, Naveen. And, um, Hello, everyone. Great to have you with us today as well. So look, in terms of what we're going to run over, a little bit of, of context first in terms of what we're seeing in the SAP market and around IT operations trends, and that's based on some research we, we ran. Um, Naveen's then going to give us a little bit of an overview on ServiceNow's perspective and how they're addressing um, the needs of the IT operations um, uh, customers. Uh, and then I'll jump into a little bit more around Avantra and how we're working together with, with ServiceNow. And most exciting part is Brenton's going to be leading uh, a live demo for us. Um, seeing is believing with some of this. So uh, we want what to... What could possibly go wrong, eh? A, a live demo. <laughs> let, let, let's see if the demo what gods will happen? smile on us today. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so, so look... In terms of the audience, I think we've got a mixed group of people here. So I think we'll just start with a little bit of context around SAP. Um, so look, around 440,000 customers globally, but importantly, around 40,000 of those are really using SAP's key um, ERP system. So um, there's a lot of SAP customers out there in the world. Um, I think in terms of the largest companies, just about all of them are running SAP in one shape or form. Um, I think what is probably not necessarily appreciated by a lot of people outside of the SAP space is that it's not just a central finance function. You know, SAP is the business critical enterprise application for many, many industries. So in manufacturing, they could be running the smart factories, you know, whether that's building automobiles uh, in utilities. You know, it's SAP that's doing customer billing and a lot, a lot of the asset management in retail. It could be supporting e-commerce systems and critical procurement and supply chain uh, processes, uh, and the same with life sciences and government, you know, is running the whole business. And uh, I think that the, the, the key takeaway here is that SAP is already very critical to most enterprise business processes, but with the greater focus on innovation and digital innovation, and, you know, with the events of the last year, it's become even more important in supporting this digital first transition that most businesses are, are making. So it's a really critical market, I think, is the, is the key summary from this. Um, in terms of um, IT operations trends, um, we did some market research about a year ago, and this was specifically around uh, SAP operations. Uh, obviously, we were in the middle of the pandemic, and there was a lot of uncertainty that was still out there for, for many, many businesses. And um, you know, the top three priorities that came through around IT operations were resiliency. I've just got to keep the lights on now. You know, it was becoming a board level agenda item around whether SAP was running, whether supply chains were still operating. I think what it also did is it shone the light on, um, you know, key personnel dependency for some of these things. So historically, there might have been one or two people in the support team that had, you know, all the knowledge to keep these things running smoothly. And now, what happens if they go sick or, you know, they need to take some personal time off? So, you know, that was, you know, reducing that key personnel dependency. And then while you're doing all of that, you know, being scalable and flexible on these systems. So while many 
industries suddenly found that the customer demand literally got turned off overnight. You know, if you're in the travel industry, for example, others suddenly saw, you know, a, a, an exponential increase in their demand. Um, so you had to be really flexible and scalable. And that meant, you know, moving to the cloud or, or, or using other ways of working. Uh, I think the other thing that came, th and actually the interesting point here is cost did not come up in the top mm -hmm. three. So, which I, I know, Brenton, we were kind of surprised on these re on the research around that. We were. Piece. You know, we always hear, got to reduce the cost of operations, but that's not front I, I of mind. There's two things I'd probably add here, Simon. So it's it's you're right, it's the cost, but it's that phrase cost to serve, which yeah. you know, for the years leading up to, 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 to the last 12 months, it was primary. It was the first thing you'd hear about how do I reduce my cost to serve? And we're just not hearing that anymore. It's about improving the service quality for the business. That's yeah. one of the real drivers that that definitely I'm seeing as well. And the second point I wanted to make was um that, that we, we it's not really reflected here, but there's an undercurrent of how do I keep people interested? And, 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 you know, it's part of this reducing key personal dependency, but also how do you give them the jobs that aren't repetitive? How do you give them something that's interesting, that's gonna further their career, that's gonna keep them wanting to come to work in your organization? And that's becoming a bigger and bigger topic, which yeah. then makes this, you know, the CIOs ask, right, how do I get them doing that work? That's exactly fascinating right. shift. It's that employee yeah. engagement. You know, there's a mm. war for talent out there at the moment. The, the, the good people are in so much demand. You know, how yeah. do you retain them and how do you attract more? I, I think that's absolutely true. Um, I, I think the second point here is is here to stay. And I think, you know, the innovation that's happened in the last year, you know, it's often been cited as 10 years progress in, in mm -hmm. one year. And this is here to stay now. You know, there's a, an expectation by the executives and the boards that, well, if we could do it last year, what about if we do it every single year and you know if we look at the businesses that are really thriving you know it's around agility it's around being able to adapt and you know the idea of executing multi-year transformation projects and you've got to wait five years to see the benefits that's long gone you know yep. time to value is key you know small innovation but doing it quick and banking the benefits really fast is is the way forward and i think that's really interesting for operationals operations professionals is that Quite often, these are done as sort of mini business as usual projects. It's not a separate project team. This is an integral part of how you do operations now. It's continual improvement. So um, I think that's here to stay. Uh, I think we can't go it back is. anymore. Um, but I think it's good because it means more interesting work and less repetitive mundane work for, for the for the. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure, Simon, if you're deliberately bringing this up because you know this is one of my hobby horses, which is that that large word that people or people perceive as large, which is the innovation word. You know, innovation can be small, incremental benefits delivered to your business. They don't have to be these multi-million, multi-million or multi-year projects. They can be small little things that just make life a little bit easier. And people shouldn't overlook those small innovations because guess what? As you, as you build up loads of little small ones, they become one giant set of transformations. That's right. And, you know, it's definitely one of my, my preferred ways of, of, of going for change in large organizations. Uh, and, you know, I think uh, I'd probably expand that even further. I'd say, you know, most businesses and boards now have got a little bit more appetite for risk and change, you know, because sure. they recognize the do nothing option is actually inherently very risky as well. So, yes. you know, that <laughs> mindset of don't change anything, you know, if it's not broken, don't, don't change it. That, I think that is, that's moved away now, which I think is all good news. Um, I think the last point is probably not so good news for uh, our SAP um, area. Uh, it really did highlight that SAP operations probably, you know, it has not changed that much in the last five years. But they are under huge pressure now to, to leverage the cloud to give the flexibility and scalability and all the other benefits that cloud can, can bring to an organization. Uh, like you know machine learning or big data analytics etc mm -hmm. but also to adopt those modern practices you know devops automation of ci cd sre etc so I, I think now you know this idea of sap operations the basis team you know being an island within the it operations team because sap is just that bit different i, I think that pressure to change and be more integrated and aligned with it operations is is real now and i think it's actually good for all the SAP operations teams. And we'll show you more on that uh, in this presentation. Yeah, 
I, I, I think you're, you're right, Simon, and a lot of people, you know, are, are skeptical of the change. And I look at it as a massively positive thing. You know, whether you're talking about SAP operations or, you know, SAP development, they really are transforming even within SAP themselves. And it's quite exciting. I mean, even if you take just this week, SAP have kicked off this DevToberfest um, uh, concept yeah. to really bring some of the new ways of developing and working with SAP to the fore. And it's using some of these technologies and some of these ways of working that, sure, they're not new to the rest of the industry, but guess what? Better late than never. And it's fantastic to see SAP and the ecosystem, whether you be in the operations camp, the development camp, the business camp, they're catching up. Yeah. And I find that very yeah. exciting for the future of the SAP operations world. Uh, and look, uh, I think what's, what's a, the good news story here is we don't need to reinvent the wheel. You know, no. this has been tried and tested now. And, and perhaps, Naveen, you've probably got... A perspective here because you're not you, you've not grown yeah. up in the SAP world you've, you've <laughs> seen this whole move left if you like yeah 100 percent, right so I think some of the you know kind of trend Brendan you know you, you were talking about we also see in service now right which is really right. that every customer is becoming essentially a digital enterprise right and just last week you know I talked to a, a manufacturing customer and they've been around for hundreds of years Right. And they're now going on to digital transformation journey because it's exactly the same thing you mentioned. Right. It's either change, adapt, right, or be irrelevant. So that's kind of right. the things we're hearing. Yeah. And exactly what you were saying before. Right. It's like what people had 10 years worth of transformation is being done in a year. Hmm. Right. Just because, you know, kind of the pandemic pushed everything forward. But I, I do believe, you know, all the trends you mentioned are here to stay. And, you know, I think end of the day, it's really going to be more or less from our customers. So it's just like ROI. Can you provide the ROI, not just from a, your own enterprise, but across your employees, across your customers, right? And that becomes the main guiding principle in terms of how we drive forward. Yeah, yeah love it. So look, I, I think, you know, now's the time, right? There's, there's the opportunity to, to do something different. I think the support from the business and you know, it is do or die, you know, that you've got to adapt to survive. So I think uh, yep. it is exciting times that, that, that we live in. Fortunately, technology is our friend. So um, Naveen, I don't know if you want to just share with us now a little bit more around the ServiceNow view on, on how you're supporting um, businesses through this change. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, you know, if we think about ServiceNow as a platform, right, we're sort of built for to a digital business, right, for tech, again, one key aspect being technology. And that is really about, you know, for any enterprise, you know, there's a whole technology underpinning and how do we help you kind of drive to the future, right? And in the way we think about it is really, you know, we are a single data model, right? That's sort of making the different silos come together. Right? Mm. And it could be like, hey, we're integrating with Avantra to push some, you know, SAP-centric data to drive that workflow. In the second place, you know, we could be connecting with a, a different observability tool or even an asset management tool, right? The concept is a single data model that enables you to kind of create a, mm. you know, workflow on top of your technology stack, yeah. right? And that really relates to sort of the planning side, the building side, the operating side, and the service side. But again, all of that in harmony to kind of push and drive outcomes. Yeah, no, I think it makes a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, certainly when we talk to um, a lot of organizations, it's the silo mentality. It's not, and this is people yeah. and organizational as much as it is different systems. You know, you, you've got to, we've got to integrate and bring this all together. And uh, I, I've certainly seen, yeah, you know, the now platform is, is, the, is a really powerful way to do that because it's not trying to replace everything that, you know, the legacy systems might be doing, but it's trying to bring them all together to give that single view and that single process and work. Yeah. And like, and it's kind of interesting that kind of, you know, kind of segue there is, is also the fact that ServiceNow cannot do this together and to, to get, cannot do all this thing by itself, right? We need partners like yourselves to help us achieve that customer outcome because, you know, the, the nuances in terms of what's required is enormous, mm -hmm. but if you sort of make it sort of a scalable open platform that, you know, we can have a, a good ecosystem on, then jointly we can solve those customer problems. Mm -hmm. no, absolutely. So look, Naveen, we've been working very closely with your team over the last few months, and obviously we've just launched the Service Graph Connector. Do, do you want to maybe just tell um, the people on, on the yeah. audience on this call a little bit more around the vision around Service Graph and, and how that fits in with what we're talking about here with the, the IT workflows? 
Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I think CMDB, you know, to start off with, has been a, a, a terminology that's been around for ages, right? And we're also evolving the CMDB to be beyond what it is today. And to think about what some of the seminal things that you touched upon as well, Simon, is that, you know, we're seeing customers, you know, notion of cloud and DevOps. That's one trend, right? Second is this trend about shifting left, which is about like, how do I catch things in my CIDD pipeline? How do I do things more, you know, in a more agile manner such that I'm not having my fraud system go down, right? And then finally, like is this notion of, you know, incremental doing things and not always being waterfall with a, you know, kind of a, a stringent team structure is the third thing we see, right? And, you know, the way we're looking at it is like not every customer wants to be, you know, one of the giant, you know, kind of tech vendors and want to operate in that manner, but they're very, very good learning that they have provided, mm -hmm. right? And then so service craft is really our notion of, of, of providing that single data layer, you know, for digital change across, you know, essentially any enterprise, right? And then think about it this way in terms of, CMDB historically has been about people process technology, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. We're running infrastructure today, right? That never goes away. That's critical nope. cloud, containers, SAP, any application stack that becomes really relevant because that is how you break down silos and bring into a single data model. And with service graph, what we've also uh, you know, been doing is how do I now connect that even to the application planning side, to a CICD pipeline, right? And even to infrastructure as code. So when you bring all of those together, that's what, you know, what service graph is. I think it's hugely powerful. And I think that, you know, not everyone's gonna have the maturity or be ready to go to a fully automated end-to-end -end process, but this is, this is an enabling yeah. technology. Uh, you know, and going back to what we said before, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. You know, there's been lots of lessons learned by some of the, you know, I guess the leading edge companies We've now got, you know, de facto standards. We've got ways of working. We've got methodologies. And, you know, while Service Graph and the platform that ServiceNow um, offers is, a, is, I guess, a technology enabler, you've still got to have the people yeah. in process. And that may take time for some organizations. But, you know, at least the technology barrier is an easy one to overcome. 100%. Exactly. 100%. And, and yeah. going back to even what we said before that, it's about biting off little bits, right? It's not about necessarily trying to do it all in the first go. You know what? get your platforms in place, get visibility into what's there, and then start building on top of it. What are the workflows you need? What are the processes you need to put in place to really make this sing? And if you Definitely. approach it like that, it, it will be successful. And you'll get business buy-in because you'll be drip feeding them benefit after benefit, which is always a good way of doing things. 100%. Absolutely. And I think what's really powerful for me on, on, on this vision is, um, you know, we, we often get feedback from customers that I haven't got time to do this. This is futures. You know, I've just got to keep get on with my day job. I think what's the interesting point is, you know, if you if you if you if you look at the stats, you know, about eighty percent of the issues that happen in IT are due to a change, whether it's planned or unplanned. Yeah. If you don't know what you've got and you don't know what's changing, how are you ever going to get on top of this? And I think right. this is where it all comes together. And so actually, this is what's going to give you the freedom to do the things you want to do. Yeah, hundred percent. And just kind of, you know, just talking about, you know, kind of the outcomes, right? So a lot of things we're also focused on with Service Graph, you know, and kind of our partnership is all about driving outcomes and driving values, right? Yep. And I think that's, you know, data is great, but then how do you actually make something out of the data, right? And what CMDB does, you know, across the board, you know, there are a lot of different things like, you know, like IT asset management you know, IT service management, right? Operation management, those are all fed by sort of CMDB and service scrap. And in the future, we're also feeding a lot of, you know, DevSecOps and, you know, uh, just DevOps use case alongside yep. working with a partner like, like uh, Avantra in the, in the sense like you bring this to an SAP house, right? Which is like, you know, how do I now enable, you know, even an SAP uh, dev environment to sort of do automated change have Avantra, you know, be in the middle because again, they understand the kind of the business context, uh, more or less the, the nitty gritty of SAP and bring that data into service now to drive up a, a workflow, right? Mm -hmm. Whereby somebody may want to do a change and instead of a, you know, a six month cycle, we can actually make that a lot quicker by looking for key things that may be gotchas by, you know, going through different, you know, rules and processes. And again, driving some of that workflow to get that change much faster. 
right? Yeah. And again, going back to what, what Brendan and uh, Simon said, this is all about, you know, we're not making you rip and replace everything you're do doing because that is never reality, right? But we're going to give you incremental things to get a you know, much better ROI and you can continue to kind of progress and, you know, get better over time. Yeah, I, yep. I, I think it makes a lot of sense. And certainly we're hearing with our customers, you know, they want to do things in incremental amounts and start to see some benefits because it, it, it's a proof point that they're, they're on the right track. Uh, and it's as much yeah, validation right. as it is anything else. Yep, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, and, then so, and let me just talk about, you know, what is this thing called Service Graph Connector, right? Service Graph Connector, as I mentioned, right, it, you know, Service Graph is a single data model that's, you know, kind of from dev operations to service. What Service Graph Connectors really do is that how do we make it easy for customers to kind of connect to that ecosystem, right? This is like the silo buster would be the other name if I was allowed to choose it. <laughs> Love That's us. what I would call it, right? And so- and I'm gonna use that one. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, that's kind of really resonates with the customers, right? Because it is a real pain point customers view with day in and day out, right? And the value for us is, you know, what we're trying to provide to customers is like, this is a, a, a validated connector that's sort of compliant with the ServiceNow CSDM model, right? Meaning that you're future proof, right? You're not having to deal with modeling changes. You get it working today, you know, five years now, we, we add more features, right? You're not having to do anything. It's just, you get the feature right there and then, right? None of the kind of turning that crank to get to that different release cycle, right? And, 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 and customization and configuration, right? So that's, that's one key aspect of it. Second is that, you know, unlike other things, it's really about time to value as well, meaning like we work with partners to make sure the data driving, you know, bringing in is accurate, but also drives outcome, that it's complete. Yes. And then we can say, hey, it does this thing, right? So that's second. And third, it just reduces risk because again, we work with a partner, right? Uh, and in this case, like for Avantra, right? In terms of like we actually work with Avantra to create, you know, honestly, like create some models that we realized we didn't have in CMDB right, and service graph, right? So we work with Avantra to create these kind of models that can reconcile different data points, right? We then work to, in terms of making sure the ingestion, the mapping, all of the things that, you know, requires to be, the data to be healthy, we'll work together. And we're now, you know, we have now packaging this as a, a, a single joint solution. Right? Exactly. The customer just downloads, clicks, installs, runs, and they're done. And, and That's actually, really kind of the value I, I, I love that. And the phrase I want to pick up on there is the time to value phrase, because I think that, you know, there's short term value, but then there's the longer term value as well. And I mean, I, I'm, oh, uh, one second, am I, apparently I'm having connection issues. Um, can you guys still hear me? Yeah, you're all clear, friends. Cool. Uh, it popped up with a dialogue box. Uh, but one of the things that I would say is that if you take the data that we have in Avantra, which is stuff to make it real, like SAP notes data, what have you got installed in the system? What namespaces have you got configured in the system? All that stuff, because of the joint work that we did with you guys, we can just push that across. And suddenly, guess, look at all that rich context. And we'll see that in a few minutes, assuming yeah. my connection holds up. <laughs> we'll see that in a few minutes with the demo. You know, yeah. we'll see that data yeah. being pushed across. And the time to value to getting that working is literally 30 seconds to a minute. So, you know, it's fantastic. It really and, is. And look, I think, you know, from a partner perspective, Naveen, you know, it, it was great having our senior developers working with your senior product developers as well. You know, as it always is with the, these technical problems, if you get the right people on the call and working yeah. together, things get resolved, you know, solutions get built and they're the right solutions. And I think having that, that co-development, co-innovation and collaboration, you know, just made it really easy. Uh, yeah. You know, there, was th there were things that, you know, ServiceNow learned about SAP and Avantra. There's things we learned around ServiceNow, and we're all better for that experience. So now we've got something that's certified, you know, we'll continue to build on, on, on this connector. And you know, it gives peace of mind, I think, to the customers that there's been a, an element of rigor. And, you know, both ServiceNow and Avantra are going to stand by this as a solution, you know. So, yeah, definitely. Look, really, really useful, Naveen. I think, uh, you know, I, I know we've got a mixture of um, backgrounds in, in our audience today. So I think for, for some that aren't so familiar with ServiceNow, it's really, you know, good to get that background. But maybe now for those that uh, are not so close to SAP, I can provide a little bit more context on what Avantra is and, and where our focus is. So, um, you know, I hate categorizing, but I, I would say that, you know, we're an AI ops and automation platform for, for SAP. 
Now, it doesn't mean that we work exclusively with SAP. We do support the full stack, uh, which you need to, to understand the health of an SAP um, landscape. Um, but I think what's really important here is it's the combination of what is traditionally called AI ops and monitoring and that observability with the, the automation and the execution. When you've got both of those together in a single platform, it's hugely powerful. And I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples here. So in terms of our product, we look at really three tenants. Um, operational transparency is, you know, give me visibility of what I've got out there. And that could be an SAP inventory. That could be around, you know, what systems support critical business processes like a supply chain. You know, what's the health of my systems in terms of dashboards, mm. SLA reporting? And, you know, if there is something wrong, tell me, give me a notification. So, so that's really very traditional, if you like. But we, we've had 20 plus years of doing this for SAP. So we, we really understand this space and all the nuances around SAP. The, the second tenant here is around, OK, assuming there is an issue, you know, I want the, the insight you provide to be really clear around what action needs to be taken. So intelligent alerts and not, you know, avoiding that alert fatigue and those big avalanches of, of, of alerts that, that may happen. Being very clear around what the root cause might be. And, and also, you know, given a recommendation of what the remediation should be. Uh, ideally, you want to be picking up these issues before they're impacting the business so you can take action and resolve without a system going down. And of course, you know, auditing and, you know, system security are, are top front of mind for a, a lot of our, our clients running SAP. And really bringing the, the automation aspect is, you know, assuming We've got some manual steps here around, you know, responding to problems and, you know, remediating these issues before they impact the business, taking a step back and saying, you know, how can we reduce the manual work in doing that? So are there intelligent automations that we could be running or first um, responses that we can do as an auto response? You know, in terms of system hardening, you know, I, I just need to apply a policy and then I want you to automatically tell me if there's a violation from that policy, better still, you might want to isolate or shut that system down. So there's a lot of smarts you can do. And then when you've got the automation running, you can make it um, triggered by events. So um, much like you might have a, an alert that triggers a remediation, equally when you run an automation, if it doesn't go to plan, you have the monitoring to pick that up and say, okay, I've got to roll back. You know, let's fall back to where we were. So I think it's really powerful having all of that together in one platform and kind of unique, I think, isn't it, Brenton? You know, when it, you it is. And actually, I was going to jump in with I'm reminded of. Do you remember the um, the scenario you and I worked on with, with a customer a few, uh, a few months ago where they wanted to monitor when they were having performance issues with their landscape? And actually, they triggered an outbound notification to service now. So an, an incident service now, which triggered a workflow which went to a budget holder and said, hey, can we add some additional capacity to our systems, please? Um, the budget holder said, yes. It reached back into Avantra automatically yeah. and triggered an automation to start up some additional capacity in the cloud. So that was a, a, a operational transparency triggered automation, which went to service now for, for, for budget approval. I, I just, I love that scenario. And I, I apologize for those who've heard tell, me tell that story before, <laughs> but I think it's a fantastic illustration of what you can do when you have all three of these things paying attention in the right place. It goes back to what we said at the beginning, right? Uh, flexibility, adaptability, scalability, yep. but without, you know, involving lots of people at two in the morning, you know? So, exactly. Um, Which I, I think they're always grateful for not having to be woken up at two in the morning. <laughs> wouldn't, we, wouldn't we all be? Wouldn't we all be? So look, I, I mentioned that we, we support the full stack. I, I think this really just highlights, you know, at the IIS level, that could be with the hyperscaler. We've got visibilities to, you know, where the system may be hosted or even on-premise mm -hmm. or in a private cloud. Um, we support all the databases and OS that SAP will run on. And let's be honest, it's been around for a long time. There's a lot out there. Um, yep. And same with the applications. When I say SAP, it's not one type of ERP. You know, while the, you know, that the end game might be to have everything running on S4HANA, the reality is, you know, there's been all sorts it's of a journey. Things, and just the integration involved in SAP, it can be huge before you start looking outside SAP. Uh, and then, you know, the final quadrant here around notifications is is a lot more so. And we'll touch on that in terms of, uh, you know, what we're doing with, with ServiceNow. So, uh, Brent, if you jump onto the next slide, then we can sure. get to some of this fairly quickly. So, look, in terms of the, the integrations, uh, we started our journey with, with ServiceNow automatically creating incidents um, in ServiceNow when there's been an alert from Avantra. Really quite straightforward stuff. Um, we can also provide all our monitoring and event data through the um, 
event management API. That's great to aggregate with other monitoring tools or to use other um, health level, oh, sorry, health log analytics capabilities within the now platform. Um, <laughs> we're here to talk about Service Graph and having that real time sync for CMD, CMDB data, and we'll actually demonstrate that. But then the automation, you know, ServiceNow is a very powerful platform and we use the integration hub capability. So you can use the, the nice workflow designer to, to orchestrate quite complex workflows that will reach into Avantra for the SAP execution. And I think this is, we're really just at the, at the starting point of what's possible here. What does all this mean? Well, look, better business experience, better innovation, and uh, I guess overall, you know, accelerate. I jumped ahead there quickly, didn't I? <laughs> That's all right. Um, and look, you know, to bring all this together in terms of, um, I, I guess, you know, a, a scenario, Brenton used a nice example in terms of the auto scaling. Uh, I think, you know, this could be a number of different things. So, um, you know, we may have, um, you know, one that's been front of mind for a lot of SAP clients recently has been identifying a security vulnerability. You know, Avantra proactively identifies this. What do you want to do? I want to uh, alert ServiceNow. I want to tell the business owner. I want to schedule a maintenance window and get approval. I want to send that maintenance window back to Avantra, bring the system down, do the patching, bring it back up, check that it's come up as we expected and there's no other problems, and then notify ServiceNow that that's all been completed. One manual step there, approval that we want to do this and scheduling the maintenance window. And the rest kind of takes care of itself. Now, there's lots of different uh, examples of automations. Our customers are coming to us all the time with new ones. Um, you know, we've got a very flexible automation platform. ServiceNow is very flexible. I can see this becoming a whole library of different scenarios that, that businesses will, will reinvent here. So, um, you know, this really is talking to the, the better together story. You know, we can't do this on our own, either ServiceNow or Avantra. So by bringing the two together, it really is a bit of a step change for, for the SAP operations teams, but also IT operations as a whole. I think really that's what we're, we're talking about here. So look, with that in mind, um, should we see some of this in action, Brenton? Yeah, you... sounds good. Uh, let me stop sharing and prepare the demo. Um, so let's go for screen three over here. I'll rely on you guys to tell me if my connection is stable enough. There's actually a thunder and lightning storm outside my window at the moment, which might be affecting oh. uh, Special my, effects. my connectivity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it, I have flashing lights everywhere. Did you it's see the on cue at the big moment? <laughs> <laughs> when I hit the sync button. So, so what I'm showing here is not an Avantra system. I'm in my ServiceNow tenant. Uh, what I wanted to show here to start with is that it is empty. I'm not making this up, I promise, or at least I'm trying not to. So unless one of my colleagues has decided to hit the sync button, you can see if I go to all my servers, it's empty. Now, what I'm going to show here is a synchronization from Avantra into ServiceNow of the base information with stuff like servers, but also then the SAP information. And I'll show you that in progress. So this is my ServiceNow tenant, and it is empty. I'm going to pop over to my uh, Avantra system, which gave me a fright there for a second because it appeared like it was down, but it's it's not. And the first thing I'm going to do is before I show the detail, I'm going to go to synchronizations and just show you how easy this is to get going. Now, I have literally configured um, my ServiceNow authentication uh, here within Avantra, and I'm just going to hit the sync button. So that asynchronous sync starts in the background while I'm talking to you about some of the other stuff. So I'm going to hit sync and hit yes. And now that's going to kick off the sync in the background. So what that's doing is it's collecting all the information from around the Avantra system, and it'll start the import jobs into the ServiceNow tenant. So once it's kind of kicked that off, there we go. It's been successfully started. It might appear with a minor delay. Let me show you what I'm syncing here. So in my Avantra system, I have my servers. So you can see I have four servers in this case in my, in my, my, my playground. Um, I have a master server, and I have an SAP system. If I go into the SAP system, uh, which is actually oddly enough switched on. You know, it's almost like I planned it. You can see it's a NetWeaver um, AS ABOP 751 system with loads of information. If I go into SAP system details, I get lots of information about this system, what clients are configured, what ABOP software components are in here, and all that kind of good stuff. And so the synchronization I just kicked off, which is as simple as I showed. Uh, yes, I had a pre-configured, but it only takes 30 seconds. You're literally putting in your... your um, integration credentials for ServiceNow. You can see them here. Guess what? I have a username, I have a password. I'm not gonna show my password. 
and that's it. Um, There's no and coding, creates... right? and this is just drag and drop. No coding. This is like logging on, just to be clear. Exactly. Literally, so I, I, I can think <laughs> even even you could do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> but once I'd configured these, I tested the user, and off it went. Now, if I pop back to service now, the first thing I'm going to show before hopefully all the stuff is in here is you'll see the background imports. Now, the green ones are completed successfully. So this is everything in the system time is about 9.36. So th th from this line upwards is all the different objects synchronizing. Now, this speaks to, to what you were saying earlier, Naveen, which is these are the data model extensions we co-innovated on. So the SAP yeah. systems, the components, the clients, the instances, the licenses, the namespaces, all this information is being sent from the Avantra system into service now. And, and th this is all happening asynchronously and you can schedule it to happen you know, semi-frequently every 240 minutes is what we typically re recommend just to keep it all in, 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 in sync. And you can see that they're all completing one by one as they go through. Um, and what this creates is something that is really exciting. And maybe I'm that sad that I find this exciting. But if I go into SAP systems, you can see the system I showed earlier, NPL, is already in here. And if I click into this system, I don't just see that it's an SAP system. I get all the relationships. So I get the SAP namespaces, um, there's the applications configured, the, the, um, the different instances that are configured and the software components. And now let me show you the really cool part. So if I hit this button over here, I go into the dependency view. And this is just fantastic stuff. All, all no coding. This is all provided by ServiceNow out of the box. And we see our SAP system NPL. We see our instances. And I can start, you know, I can start to drill through here and say, right, well, where is this instance hosted? Okay, it's on this Linux server over here. Well, let me figure out what else is on that Linux server. Oh, okay, so we've got the two instances and we've got the database on this server. And I'm able to traverse up and down the data model just like that. So suddenly your non-SAP operations teams can see all this stuff. And we're talking no coding, we're talking about a 30 second synchronization and suddenly all your data is synchronized between Avantra and ServiceNow. And this is the power of the Service Graph connector and the certified Service Graph connector, which you know will be working, as you, as you mentioned, I mean, into the future. So it really brings yeah. that stability, brings the rich information and allows you to do so much um, with this stuff. And thank you, Demo Gods, for actually working and, and smiling <laughs> on me on this one. Um, so, so that's the demo. Connected Avantra to ServiceNow, push the data in, and you all saw it happen in real time um, just like that. Over to you, Simon. You, you know, Brenton, I've spoke to a few customers that have been running projects to do what you did in a few minutes um, mm -hmm. or months and still have not reached a, a, a result. So <laughs> uh, it's real, guys. You know, seeing is believing. There's no smoke and mirrors here. That's that's real uh, and happening. And it, it, it is that simple. And, you know, what I really love about that is that, you know, non-SAP experts can now access, you know, really detailed SAP data. And the right. data that ServiceNow's got is at a level that basis yeah. or SAP operations guys can really use it to do to work out root cause of issues. So, you know, you're no longer tied to using multiple systems. You've got that single view of what's going on. And hey, guess what? You know, if your business process is not end-to-end -end SAP, which is the case for most businesses, you can now start to look at that end-to-end -end business process. Um, right. So it's hugely powerful. And, you know, going back to what's going to give you the step change, what's going to help you be more agile, more flexible. Well, if you can execute these changes really quickly and you've got a real time view of what's going on, you're really well placed to improve operations, drive efficiencies and break these silos down. And then ultimately it gives you more time to focus on, you know, the really important stuff, the innovation, the, the real yep. uh, value adding stuff. So look. This is just a taster. Um, if you'd like to find out more, um, you know, certainly there's a lot of information on the Avantra website. Um, please feel free to reach out to me directly or um, Aaron's uh, Technology Alliance uh, Manager within ServiceNow. Um, I know a lot of you probably have your own ServiceNow account teams and, and they can certainly navigate back to the, the relevant experts for Service Graph. Um, we do have a one pager, which if you want to share within your organizations of you know, what's the value, why would you do this? Um, perhaps your uh, your SAP or your ServiceNow representatives are not on this call uh, and you want to just give them a summary. So that's available on our website. And then lastly, um, Brenton, just for the final slide, you know, this is available um, in the ServiceNow store. Um, do go and have a look. There's um, a wealth of extra technical information, screenshots, uh, videos, uh, how-to guides, um, and, and we also provide extra details of what's available. So 
for all of those that are, of you that are running ServiceNow, and some of you will also be running Avanta already, um, it's free. You can just buy it and get it up and running straight away. So, um, you know, what's not to like about that, I guess, is, exactly. is the key summary. Um, <laughs> look, um, that, that's all from me. I don't know if there's anything that you'd like to add, Naveen, in terms of, you know, where you're seeing service graph going and feedback that you're hearing from clients at the moment. Yeah, again, service graph, you know, I think our notion was really that, you know, silo buster and make that easy. And that's resonating, you know, obviously you know, with SAP customers, but across the board, because there's a real need in terms of simplifying and having a single view, right? And uh, the key no nuance here for us is really not just a single view, but a single view that makes sense. And that's kind of what we've achieved with Avantra. And that's sort of, you know, what we're trying to drive with, you know, a lot of other kind of ecosystems as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, we're all used to hearing technology becoming harder and more complex. I think it is, but I think in some areas it's getting easier. And, you know, this is an example where actually complex stuff, the stuff that was historically very complex is now really, really simple. And yeah. isn't it a breath of fresh air now that you can just focus on the other stuff? So look. 100%. Great stuff. Look, um, uh, any other closing comments from your side, Brenton? I know we've got a few customers that have been deploying this, and uh, yeah, and uh, to, to, they're they're enjoying it for sure. And and you know, I'm getting nothing but positive feedback. Um, I think the only thing I would say, just to, to, in closing, from my side, is just remember those things. You know, take the bite sized chunks. You know, this is a gimme. If you're running a Vantra and you're running service now, you should be looking at this. Um, because you know what in 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, you're suddenly taking such a, a, a step forward for free that, you know, why wouldn't you go down this route and then build on top of it? So, you know, make your life that little bit easier, get the context to the other operations teams and show them SAP isn't special, you know, bring them into the fold and your business will thank you in the long run. It will create business benefit. Yeah, I think that's huge. I think that's huge. Look, it's been a good discussion. Um, hopefully, everyone who's joined has, uh, has found it interesting and, and valuable. And uh, as I said, if you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. And we're more than happy to uh, uh, schedule a, a specific uh, discovery or uh, workshop session. Um, this is recorded, so um, it will be available on demand if you want to share with, with other people in your organization. So uh, thanks for your time. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Naveen. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Simon. Bye-bye. Thank you.